I've noticed now for a couple of months that the uptick in comments saying things along the line of, I'm never gonna get my amateur radio license or any license for that matter, and that the FCC is possibly coming to your door to shoot your dog and violate your Fourth Amendment rights. Well, that's not really the topic of today's video. It reminded me that there is a misunderstanding on why the FCC actually exists and what one of its primary purposes is for. Let's talk about that. How's it going, everybody? I am Josh, KI6NAZ. Thanks for clicking on the Ham Radio Crash Course again. Make sure to subscribe, too, particularly if you found this helpful. So to explain this misunderstood reason why the FCC exists, or one of the reasons, I'm going to have to explain, one, what radio is, and a bit of history. We are surrounded by visible and non-visible light, and those differences in that light is expressed in the electromagnetic spectrum. It starts out at very high frequency where gamma radiation exists, the stuff that can give you cancer, moving down through x-rays, ultraviolet, infrared, visible light that you could consider like chromatic, different colors, right? Those colors are expressed as different frequencies. Well, as you get down past visible light into lower frequencies, that's where we found radio frequencies and how ultimately humans discovered that they could put information on those radio frequencies and transmit them to other locations. Other people, computer devices, computers speaking to computers, you get the idea. There is no space within that invisible wireless RF spectrum that isn't sought after by someone. Someone wants to be the primary user within a frequency space. Some of these users are multi-billion dollar corporations, things like AT&T and cell phone companies or cell phone providers that would like to use all the frequency spaces they can to run a business. Now, there are other primary users like the military, first responders, and amateur radio operators, and GMRS operators, and CB operators. And we find ourselves in this conundrum, particularly if you want to coordinate how we use those frequencies, is how do you do it efficiently? Now, sure, I have issues with the FCC. I've, I've definitely talked about things I don't like that the FCC does, but I am dumbfounded to come up with a better way to coordinate these very specific users that want access to frequencies to either run a business, protect lives, or to run a service and hobby or just have fun with their families. It's quite difficult. When radio frequencies were first discovered, people developed transceivers so that they could then sell receivers. People started buying receivers to hear the programs that were being transmitted, and that, at the time, newly understood frequency spaces and the radios that could actually transmit on them was much smaller than it is today. Further, those frequencies were, were generally kind of like beyond line of sight, meaning the RF would hit the atmosphere and come back down. Well, as more people wanted to start transmitting to get their information out there, whether it's just people having fun, um, broad, broadcasting, which was often sometimes church gospels, people loved it. A lot of people got radios just for that function. Well, given enough time, Corporations got involved, businesses got involved, and then once money got in, transmitters started getting more powerful. And as transmitters got more powerful, people started to step on each other. As one person believed that they had a frequency space that was always theirs, they've been transmitting there for months, if not years, all of a sudden, they're getting reports that another station is on the same frequency as them or slightly off a little bit, causing interference. Well, all attempts to work this out civilly and without in the involvement of the government didn't go so well. After people transmitting on, each on top of each other over and over and having relatively the wild west of radio, it was quickly determined that the way they were handling at that moment, coordinating these finite frequencies, was not working. And thus, the FCC was ultimately created. So the misunderstood thing that people, particularly the people that don't want to get a license, and by the way, I don't care if you don't want to get a license. I, you don't have to. It's okay. But I'm just hoping that you maybe think about this argument I'm making. It's not that the FCC necessarily wants to step on your rights or to get in front of your ability to exercise your First Amendment rights. The reason that things like 
amateur radio exists on the couple of bands that we have access to, and GMRS and CB, is we kind of need a space that companies and much more powerful transmitters will avoid, that they know they don't belong there, that they're not the primary user. So if your only mindset is, is that the government is trying to prevent me access to radio, you should probably flip that around and say the government is actually preventing these faceless, nameless corporations from just saying, hey, that's a really nice frequency you have there on UHF. Sure would suck if a random blast of digital data popped up on a certain frequency there and then never left because people's cell phones are always on and data is always being transmitted. Those sandboxes, if you will, those slices of the electromagnetic space is what keeps us from just ha having complete chaos where companies, again, that is not a switchboard operator saying, okay, I'm now going to patch you through on something something frequency to your intended party. No, these are all automated, right? These all work off of computer systems. So they're running digital data and that digital data Sounds like garbage to any normal radio operator if they're using FM, like on a handy talkie. Now, not all bands are considered the same or as valuable in amateur radio. We have many bands, particularly the high frequency bands all the way up and beyond 10 gigahertz is really sought after. It's really valuable. The FCC would love to take those away from us and sell it off for a big payday, but just using handheld radios here, 70 centimeters is actually a relatively valuable band as well. And so it's pretty nice, if you think about it, that the only thing you have to do to guarantee you have access to it is get your amateur radio license. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Josh, you haven't, quant you haven't qualified that argument. Why is getting a license protecting my access to those frequency spaces? Well, I'm so glad you asked. Amateur radio licenses last for 10 years, and same with GMRS, actually, no, 10 years. And CB, of, of course, is a, is a free license space, but it's in a relatively less important area, and it's a relatively small space, regardless. The only way the FCC knows that amateur radio is still a thing, still popular, still in use, isn't by them turning on a radio and listening, although they absolutely do that, just not as much as they used to they use the amount of people licensed. If for some reason amateur radio intake of new licenses started to drop, then the writing on the wall would be is that amateur radio is no longer being used. And the fact that the license lasts for 10 years makes it really difficult for us to go in and get new metrics to show how much is amateur radio in use. And we've heard it before from the ARRL and, and many others that just because someone gets their license, that doesn't mean they're actually a user on the air and active in the bands. And while that is completely true, we have no other data point. The only data point we have is new licensees, at least from the point of the FCC, something they can trust. Meaning someone took the time, the wherewithal, to study for the test, pass the test, pay the fee, and are now licensed. And if at any time those numbers start to go down, then they would be justified in asking, hey, should we repurpose these finite resources that is our frequency spaces? So remember everybody, it's not that the FCC is trying to put you in a box, get your information and find out more about you. Although I know there's a lot of people that believe that. I personally don't. I think they've got a much easier time getting your driver's license or your rent or whatever information that they can from a much easier amount of spaces. It's to keep the businesses and corporations and the people that want your frequencies or these finite frequencies out. That's one of the major, major misunderstood reasons why the FCC exists. So I'll leave you with this. I think it's always important to challenge the way we do things as a society, as we collectively come together as human beings to make the world a better place for ourselves and for our future offspring and just future people that have to live in the same place we live. There's no reason not to question things like the FCC and how they do business and how they coordinate frequencies. But if you can't come up with a better solution, then you've got to work with, out with the one we have. And I personally can't think of a better way to prevent AT&T from transmitting on my frequencies because they go, YOLO, I just want to transmit here now. And I've got more power than you. I've got more technology than you at my disposal that I can use at any time. Further, phones and other devices are really good at just kind of like 
not listening to me screaming into an FM radio going, this is my frequency first, I was here first, I've been here every day, all the time, every night, every day, blah, blah, blah. Phones don't care. Digital modes don't care. We just get stepped on, ultimately. So maybe think about that before you jump to the conclusion that the FCC is just out there trying to violate your First Amendment rights. It's more likely that they're trying to create like an even space where everybody gets a little piece of the action, a little taste, if you will, of the frequencies that they need, and that we can all work better together in a society. So I appreciate you very much watching this video. If you found it helpful, consider subscribing and giving me a thumbs up. And a big shout out to all my patrons here. I seldom do this and they deserve a bit of shout out. Thanks for allowing me to be able to do what I do here on YouTube. If you'd like to join their ranks and help out the Ham Radio Crash Course, consider taking the link in the description to check out the Patreon. There are a number of perks that go into the different levels, including newsletters, monthly, and stickers, and other fun stuff too. So thanks so much for watching, everybody. Appreciate you. I'll talk to you later. 73.